Hey. Hello, Foy. How are you going? Not so bad, Sean. You sure? Yeah, I'm going all right. What's uh, what's been happening today? Uh, God's honest truth. Just dropped the kids off at school, and the eldest boy was a bit upset because this. Uh, I only just got back last night. And, ah. Yeah, dropped them off, and then had to go straight back to school. They came and appease him, you know. That's yeah. that's my more rock and roll, Sean. Rock and roll. <laughs> That's good. What have you been doing a lot of uh, in the studio at the moment or, or a lot of gigs taking up a lot of your time at the moment? Not a lot of gigs, actually. Mostly studio work, either uh, writing or recording with others. Um, better writing on my own, but yeah, not too many gigs at all. I don't think any gigs, actually. I'm, I've gone out later in the year, as as you know. Yeah, as I know. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so yeah, mostly studio. That's cool. You, I have heard you speak about co-writing. You, uh, you like to write your own songs and obviously put your own material out there, but the co-writing thing, you have been doing it for the last probably 10 years or eight to 10 years, but it's fairly yeah. new, isn't it? It's, it's it, c- compared to your career, co-writing was just something that just sort of, did it fall on you? Uh, you met Ed Sheeran and uh, something along those lines. Where did the co-writing start? Well, pretty much exactly that with Ed. Um, he had reached out to me uh, when he was doing the first record plus and sent me a couple of tracks. A Team was one of them, I remember that. Wow. And asked me that I want to co write. And I just wasn't, I hadn't co written at that point. And I didn't know why, I just didn't understand why you would or why, like, why would you do that or how, um, how would that even happen or, um, it was so far from my remit at that time. And he, so he'd sent me these songs and I remember getting back to him and going, look, these songs are great, man, but you don't need me. I mean, I, I don't even know what I would add. I, I wouldn't know what to say. I'm doing a different thing, but thanks for thinking of me type thing. And uh, a couple of years went past and he invited me out on tour with him. Um, and I thought, when's it? At this point, I was like 38. And I was like, when am I ever going to get a chance to go out on tour with a bona fide pop star? I mean, I should <laughs> say yes to this. I should say yes, just for the crack alone. Yeah. Uh, so I went on that tour, and then we were backstage somewhere, somewhere in the UK. Um, he was had this idea, and I was kind of suggesting lyrics and suggesting melodies or whatever, and going, "Oh, here, what if it was this? What if it was that?" Uh, then yeah, that became a song, and, and he reached out. Was like, oh, "I need your publishers. I need your publishing details, you know, because of that song we wrote." And I was like, "What song?" <laughs> You didn't even know. Like no, he was like that touch and go song. I was going, what, what? I don't know. I, I was going, so that, so we co wrote. Is that what that, that's what we did? You know, I just <laughs> was thinking, I was hanging, you were writing a song and I was hanging out, shouting out the odd lyric here and there. And you know what I mean? And the odd idea. Uh, so I, I kind of started with him and then I wrote a bit more with him. And I guess what I discovered through that was, uh, that I quite enjoy it. You know, I, I, it's almost like a break. It's almost like, um, you like getting into someone else's vernacular for a minute, mm. uh, was a break from my own <laughs> incessant. Are you ever, uh, is, there ever is there ever a time you're writing a song for someone and halfway through you're like, ah, oh, I wish that was my song. Do you, <laughs> <laughs> do you sort of, you know, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm trying to think if, if I can think of any specific songs. I know I've taken songs that I, like songs that have been sitting in the background for me. What what will happen with me a lot of the time is that there'll be like a, a verse or a verse and a chorus or even just a kind of an idea, a germ of an idea. And I would sit on that, you know, like a hen on an egg for as long as it takes to hatch. Um, but the odd time I've taken those ideas into a session and gone, you know what, let, let, let's let's work on this idea because I think this would really suit you. Or, and then we write it and nothing happens with it. And then I feel a bit devastated. Uh, I'm like, damn it, I should have just <laughs> kept that for myself. Why did I give that one away? With your own material, is it very close, closely guarded? You sort of, you don't let too many people touch it kind of thing? Uh, how, how yeah, you... I don't co-write. Yeah. yeah, I don't co-write at all for my own thing. But that uh, you know, and it's not a, it's not a. Well, I, I don't. I, I like to think it's not a. 
um, pride or snobby thing. It, it's just that, I don't know, that's mine. You know what I mean? That's my own personal joy. That's that's what I got into this for, and that's what I do. That's my raison d'etre, so to speak. You know, when I write with other people, it's kind of, it's in, it's it's work. It's enjoyable, but it's work. You know what I mean? It's enjoyable work. It's it's a it's a job that I really enjoy. Um, whereas writing for myself is not. It's more than a job. It's 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 my life. It's what I can. It's what I need to do to get uh, my release valve. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to. I don't want to involve anyone else in that because I kind of like. I like it that it, that it it can be painstaking. Sometimes a song can come. I had a, a two songs the other week that I wasn't ex, I wasn't even expecting to write. I just sat there and two songs popped out. Um, but the vast majority of the time, it uh, you know, it, there's a long gestation period. Where does the inspiration come from most? Is it you know? Are you walking along the beach and you and you think of a song? Are you driving? Are you traveling somewhere? Is it, you know, does it just hit you at any time? Yeah, there is no most. There's just whatever. It's just, it's almost like, um, I don't know. I feel like writing songs, for me anyway, my own songs, it's kind of like, they're kind of like cats. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like uh, if I kind of don't pay that much attention, you know, they'll, they'll come over and, you know, wrap ah, their tail up around right my leg. Yeah, that's good. And if I focus too much on them, they're like, well, you know, I don't want, you know, I just yeah. go off about their own business. So it's kind of like, it's important for me personally, anyway, to just um, focus on whatever the task at hand is, whether that's ripping out a kitchen or mopping a floor or fixing the motor or cleaning something, uh, do that. And, the, and then songs just come out of the blue, come and accost you, come tap you on the shoulder or whatever. I like that. I like uh, referencing it to cats. It makes full sense. I didn't know where you were going with it to start with, but uh, but that makes that makes <laughs> <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> How long you've been doing it? How long you've been writing songs for? I know that um, it's you know it says around two thousand six you're releasing stuff, but. You, yeah. How, how how long have you been doing? Well, how long I've been trying to do it is very different between how long I've been doing it. Um, I, I guess, I mean, I've always been trying to write songs. I remember my dad and I sitting down and trying to write this blues song when I was, about, I would have been six. We were still in Breeze Mind. So yeah, I the, the oldest I could have been was six and we were trying to write a song then. So the idea of songwriting, the concept of making music up has always kind of been floating around with regards to trying to do it around 15, 16, 14, 15, 16, around that time. Um, I started trying to join various bands, that kind of yeah. thing. But the God's honest truth, not to get too morose or whatever, but the God's honest truth is what, the night my dad died in January 1999. Um that's uh, that's that that was the night I, I first wrote a song that was worth anything that felt completely connected to me it felt like every song up to that point was a little bit like borrowed knowledge you know what I mean like I was I was sort of uh I don't know papering over the cracks a little bit you know what I mean I, I didn't really know what I was saying I was just trying to say something that sounded smart or cool yeah. or deep or uh and in that moment, uh, something changed in me, and, and I started writing songs. And you wrote a lot from from then on, didn't you? As in that, not just like to to now. I'm saying in that six months after that happened. Oh, I, it was brutal. It was brutal. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, recommend it. <laughs> mm. But you know, well, I guess I would. I guess I would. I was talking to someone about this the other day, and going, it's it is the weirdest thing to say out loud. But strangely, the, the passing of my father was like his death was one of the greatest gifts I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's kind of it sounds really weird to say, and uh, needless to say, I would give everything back to have him back. I would swap it in a heartbeat. There'd be no, I wouldn't have mm. to think. But you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda, mighta, hada. But you know that kind of stuff isn't real. So, um. Nothing I can do about it. The truth is, it was a it was a gift. It was a, a very strange gift, but his death kind of just opened the doors, like kicked the 
kicked the gates open. Uh, yeah, so for the, for the first six months, it was any sense of writing a song that people would understand or any sense of writing a song that would get me to some other level or maybe radio would like or maybe people would like on a live set or maybe anyone would like. All that just disappeared, evaporated overnight and songs became something very, very different. Uh, what they are, they became what they are. Songs revealed themselves in that moment. I realized, oh, wow, I think the reason I wasn't able to write was because I wasn't chasing the truth. Right. I was right. chasing, I was chasing, a, I was chasing a facade. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, I need a song that people can sing along to. I need a song that people can feel this way to. I need a song that people, it's like, no, you don't. You, what do you feel? Mm. You know what I mean? Any artist worth their salt, uh, you know, are, they're chasing their own truth. They're chasing their own kind of reality. And uh, I wasn't doing that up to that point. Did you find when tragedy strikes like that and you start writing about it and then you start singing it and releasing it, it helps in that time? Does it, uh, like, like, could you, could, could you try and think of like, if you didn't have music at the time and you weren't writing songs, would do you think it would have been a lot harder for you, but you had this outlet to, to, uh, to, to release? Yeah. I would have drank myself into the same yeah. hole he was in. Yeah. Honestly, like that's not even a, that's not even being facetious. That, that's that's what I would have done if I didn't have that. If I didn't have that pressure valve, which I've you know I've I've learned to temper it a lot better since then. But it's the same valve, you know. No matter what happens, whether it's the breakup of one of my many marriages, <laughs> or or the death of somebody close, or the, you know, whatever. Like no matter what goes on now. I've got a companion. I've got the best counselor in the world, bar none. Yeah. Yeah. You know, bar none, always there, a constant comfort, a constant comfort. Just write, write about it as true as you can. Um, and it, it compartmentalizes it. It, you know, helps identify what it is and uh, helps, helps me anyway, understand it a bit better. And mm -hmm. vast majority of stuff I write will never see the light of day. It's for me. Are you are you writing a lot every day? Um, no, no, I'm not writing. Certainly not full songs. Like the, the last time I wrote a couple of full songs was two weeks ago. There, when, when I wasn't expecting to, I just sat with my guitar. I had a day off in the sunshine, and I got my guitar out just to mess around, and out out it popped. Um, but yeah, there's always ideas. I'm always like sketching. I feel like you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not fastidious about, uh, or regimented in any way about like, okay, I sit down from 10 to five, I'm yeah. writing like, like Randy Newman or whatever, you know what I mean? It works for some, it, it really does work for some. That's a, that's definitely a good way to do it if it, if it feels right. But just for me, it, it suits me to let it come naturally. Has the 10 years since that, uh, with Joy of Nothing, did that come quick? Are you, are you sitting there thinking, wow, it's been 10 years since then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't believe it when my manager was like, because we just celebrated 15 years of hope, like the yeah. year a couple, a year before or a year so before. And he said, yeah, and, and next year's 10 years of joy of nothing. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? Yeah. That can't be 10 years ago. That was like three years ago, surely. Uh, yeah, <laughs> man. Time flies, right? Time yeah. flies. Um, yeah, that was that was that was a shock. Hey, tell us about where you're from. Um, Bangor, is that right? Yeah, Bangor. There's Bangor. There's a hard G. Okay, Bangor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you say Bangor where I'm from, it means something completely different. <laughs> uh, I know you've got you've you've written about it in in a, in a few songs, and um, yeah. What, what what was it like? You know, that's where you grew up. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, primarily, primarily. Can you hear that squeaking in the background? Uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> what is it? That's my dog uh, chewing his toy. <laughs> Boy! My dog barks while I'm doing these all the time. Yeah. I see, he, he'll start barking soon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, your hometown, uh, what sort of dog you got? Uh, Collie, or a, a 
Yeah, a cocker. Sorry, a oh. cocker. That's his boy. Look, who's that? Who's that? Hello, hello. <laughs> Can't hear me, obviously, but no, <laughs> beautiful. No. I'm a dog person <laughs> right. too. I, lo- you, I love dogs. Ah, uh, they're good for you, aren't they? I got a big boy. Good for the heart. I got a. Oh he's, yeah. He's like 55 kilos. He's like a big uh, Saint Bernard cross poodle or something in him. So. Uh... A Saint Bernard <laughs> poodle. That <Yeah>. Poor poodle. <laughs> That's what everyone that says. Poor poodle. And everywhere I walk as well, they're like, "Who's walking who?" Because he's, <laughs> cause he's oh, so big. Dear. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so bang, Bangor. How, how yes, is Bangor. Um, you know, is it a big place? It's no. Uh, what, what, what's the population? It's probably about 60,000, something like that. Yep. And that's a, you know, that, that, that's it. And, and it's, a, yeah, like the, the outskirts of it as well. Um. Yeah, small enough place right on the coast. Uh, you can see Scotland on a good day. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, there's something about growing up by that. Growing up by the sea was was incredible. Actually, just even just to look out and go like, where does that go? Yeah, I know. Where the does that go? It's wild looking at the sea. I I grew up by the ocean as well. Just looking out and just it doesn't doesn't end, and it's it, it's mad. Yeah. Yeah, there's something beautiful about it, and and I, I don't mind writing songs as well. And and, and I I asked that question before because I, I look out at the ocean and, I, and it's 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 inspiring. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's full of mystery, isn't it? I mean, we know more about the surface of the moon than we do about what's underneath yeah. the water. Uh, yeah, and it's like, shoo shoo. It's like, uh, <laughs> you know, looking at your native home, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's like wow, that that we came from there. Yeah. Once upon a time, once upon a time, that's kind of somehow where we belong in a sense. Um, yeah, Bangor's a cool, cool place, just out of the way, kind of like a a bit of a holiday town. It would be considered back home. Yeah, like people would, especially in Victorian times. But you know that that lingered on throughout the years. But in Victorian times, Bangor was the it was the place. You know, you go down there, there'd be fun for. <laughs> Boy, leave that alone, you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a cool place to come from, to be honest. And load of songwriters from there for whatever reason. Well, you know what? It, maybe I don't know how much you want to invest in this, or how much I even I want to invest in this. But in in the Abbey there in Bangor Abbey, which was a, a monastic site since the fifth century, they had uh, monks there that for two hundred and fifty years had 24 seven worship. Wow. So every hour of every day for 250 years, oh there was God. singing going on and they would just, they would just rotate the monks. And I, I certainly like to think at least that that has permeated the, the landscape there, you know, mm. um, Are there lots of artists, refer- lots of, yeah. yeah, lots of, lots of singers and stuff and lots of songwriters um yeah. are they are they are they writing tunes like you or or do you do you stand out or you know when you're playing around those people is your music considered different or um well you... my ego wants to say of course i stand out but in reality probably <laughs> not you know pro- probably dime a dozen just i worked harder you know yeah uh no i know loads of songwriters from there i mean two door cinema club from there ian oh, archer yeah. from there and of course snow patrol uh yeah. from there um to name a few um yeah it's a and also loud and guitars the guitar that i play they were born in bangor in 1974 same year i was um i don't know it's got it's got an energy it's got an it's it's weird place man because it's got an energy that i i don't think has ever been tapped into properly it's because it's got this rich kind of sort of uh artistic undertones i mean you can really feel there's a, it's got a vibe about it but, but it's still a bit sort of shitty <laughs> <laughs> you know it's still a wee bit kind of uh yeah grotty like 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 a bad tooth and a smile yeah yeah i'm on the, i'm on the central coast which is an hour north of sydney and i reckon the central coast is one of those places where people sort of give rib to you know yeah oh, you're from the central coast you know you're not from sydney sort of thing yeah um, 
But yeah, you will be here in Sydney. You, you, you're coming out on tour. Um, last time you were here, you did quite well as well, right? Things, you know, places sold out 2016 or something. Dude, I, I have never ceased to be amazed any time I go back to Australia. Um, I guess there just must be so many Irish people there that are, you know, get <laughs> get ho- homesick, you know, and any time someone from home comes back, they're like, right, let's go. We're going and we're bringing 50 mates. <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> Irish pubs in Sydney. Yeah, yeah, right. I know. Yeah, uh, yeah no, I always do really well um, and always have an absolute blast, you know. Yeah, I, I I love going to Australia. It's kind of, it's got the right mindset for yeah. a man like me. It sits me right down to the ground. <laughs> Everything's no worries for the most part. I mean, I guess if you live there, you probably see, you see different sides of it. But for someone coming in, a blow in, yeah. it's just like, wow, is everyone this chilled all the time? <laughs> and I've, I've yet to experience the contrary. Uh, so, Yeah, no, people are pretty chill over here. Probably sometimes a little too chill, you know. Yeah, I'm in my car. I'm like, get out of the way. Come on, come on. Like yeah. <laughs> people are going slow, whatnot. Hey, I remember um first time I listened to Upbeat Feel Good that song in particular, and yeah. uh I remember I, I probably wasn't having the best day, and uh and it came on. I'd already heard She Burns and a few others, and as soon as I heard that song, it, it changed my day. Okay. There's something about it. I mean, it's upbeat. It's feel good. You know, I, um, and I love that song ever since that day when, when it was able to, uh, to change my mood, I thought, wow, this guy can, can really write. Um, tell us about that one. Um, where did the inspiration for that come from? I mean, I guess the reason it resonates with you is because it resonated with me and the writing of it. You know what I mean? It wasn't, the uh... I didn't sit down and go, okay, I need a song that feels yeah. upbeat and feels good. You know what I mean? No. It was born out of, um, you know, new love. I'd, I'd <laughs> the first marriage had gone awry. Mm. And I'd met the, I'd met this other girl and I, there was nothing much to think about. It was just it was like, wow, this is all right. I don't need to question anything here. I'm upbeat and I feel good. This is, this is great. Um, and the song came out of that. Yeah, that you know was... that feeling where yeah, that feeling when you when you when you're in that mood with a girl, you think you know, no matter what it is, you want to ask me. If you want to ask me, now is the time. Yeah, I'd say yes to anything. What do you want to go and live on the moon? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. That's a great explanation of that one. Um, how do you how do you get your moustache like that? You just twist it and leave it, and that's it. Is that is that the is that all you do, or is there are there products for the moustache? Yes, there's a product. I was looking to see if I had it handy, but I don't. <laughs> there's a. I got a mate of mine, Joss, runs a a barber shop in Sheffield, like the coolest barber shop in the history of cool barber shops, yeah. uh, called Savills. Uh, and they make they they've done like a deal with uh pomade, the pomade, right? Yeah, the hair stuff, the old the old sort of grease the hair back thing yeah. that you'd see in the 50s in America. They've uh, done a deal with them and they make this, I think it's copacetic. I think is how you pronounce it. Okay. Like a, I wish I had it so I could show you. The, yeah. But it's kind of like a, like a, almost like a, like a gel sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's a real trademark for you now. You can't, you, you can't just trim that, those corners. Like it's just, that's you. No. <laughs> Yeah, so I believe. Weirdly, you know what? The only reason I, I always kind of thought when I was an older guy, thought when uh, when I was a younger guy, I think when I get old, I'm definitely going to be one of those old men with a wee twiddly moustache, you know, and a, and a cravat, speaking with a French accent. Can't speak French or anything, just speak with a French accent. Cause why not? <laughs> uh, no, I always thought I'd have this tash and... Uh, quite honestly, I didn't know I could grow one until recording The Joy of Nothing. I'd been on, I think, a three, four week tour and came right back and straight into the studio for two weeks. And I just literally had no time to shave. So by the end of that session, I had I had a moustache and we were all laughing about it because I looked like a right, uh, well, we would call it a steak, you know, but what would you guys call it? You would call it, what are they called in the, a bogan? 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like a right, like a right fucking hey, 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 Bruce. Uh, you do you know, the accent just, well. Well, someone once said to me, if you think about it, the Australian accent just sounds like a drunk Irish person. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fair assumption. <laughs> yeah, get out of man. <laughs> That's great. That is so good. Um, well, 10 year uh, anniversary. I'll be at your Sydney show. Can't wait for that. It's going to be awesome. Uh, it's also yeah, the 10, so. 10 year anniversary of the moustache. So that's great. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going to be spectacular. I think you're, um, I think you kick off tour in September. You have October off and then like November, December, January, I think. Right through December. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going right through to January. I think it, it sort of uh, goes in earnest until February when I get home properly. Wow. Do you like tour? Uh, <laughs> I like, I like being, I like the, being in in the room with people when everyone's there in the same place at the same time for the same reason, yeah. all of one accord, you know what I mean? And and that, 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 that playing on that energy, it's kind of like surfing, I guess, mm. being that I'm talking to an Australian from the coast. You know, <laughs> I'm not good at like surfing. Catching, <laughs> yeah, I don't really. Uh, but you know, like catching that wave, that right time, like feeling, feeling, feeling where the room's going and, and feeling where you're going in yourself and being there with a the, doing that in front of uh, a room full of people has got it's a very specific energy yeah. and I quite enjoy that but it's the bit in between I always say that you know I get paid to travel the music's free yeah um because it's uh yeah and, and the being away from home like we started this interview I was telling you about my, my boy mm. I dropped him at school and as soon as I left he was upset so I had to go back in you know because oh. going away and coming back it's hard on it's hard on the kids and it's hard on any relationships as my you know, stockpile of past relationships is proving. Um, <laughs> I'm glad it, you can it, still it's... smile and laugh about that. I mean, there's a lot of people that wouldn't want to bring it up, but uh, you've got this smile to you where you're like, Oh, that's life. <laughs> oh, listen, it is life, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, wor- worse things happen to better people every day, Sean. You know what I mean? That's there's right. no point uh, sitting around complaining about shit. Uh I've got it made by all accounts. I do music for a living, but yeah, the, the, the leaving the kids is the is the hardest bit. That's by far, by a country mile, the hardest bit about tour life is what it does to any any and all relationships. Well, you got to make some money, you know. <laughs> the kids, the kids will know, know when they get it when they get older, you know. Yeah, that's a really terrible note to talk about my tour on. Yes, but I love tour. <laughs> it's awesome. We're going to have an awesome time. I'm going to be on top form every yeah. single night. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for jumping on the, uh, on the street press podcast, boy. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure having you on there and, and uh, thanks for opening up uh, about your father as well. Um, you know, uh, it's very important that um, people hear things like that. And uh, you know, uh, I'm also, you know, I, I lost my father um, overnight very quickly uh, as well. And, mm. And uh, I, I, I dabble with a song or two here and there, and that, that helped me get through too. So uh, it was really nice yeah. to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I feel for you, brother. Well, here, listen, let's, uh, let's talk further in Sydney. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get a pint. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a zero pint. I'm, all, I'm off the drink. Trust me, if I was still on the drink, Australia would be a car park by <laughs> November. <laughs> oh, that's I'd have great. that place leveled. <laughs> <laughs> all right well I'll, I'll get you a zero in sydney 